Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we have a different one. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing and giving my opinions on a bunch of albums that I should have listened to a long time ago. I started listening to rap in 2020, and a lot of classic albums I've never got a chance to listen to. So in this video, or I guess in this series, because I'm going to be making multiple videos like this, uh, I'm going to be reviewing these albums I never listened to. So I hope you guys enjoy, and there's not really going to be visuals for this video. It's just going to be a picture of the album cover, because that's easiest for me to talk about it. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys at the end. First up, we have Overly Dedicated by Kendrick Lamar. And I think this is a fantastic project. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not an album, and it's just a mixtape. With his first album being Section 80, whether or not that's a mixtape or not too, I have no idea. But... It is fantastic. This is a really good album. Each song has its, you know, it has its pros. Uh, my personal favorites are PNP 1.5 and Barbed Wire. And I think those two are some of his best works. Like, they're the most enjoyable. They're not his best song, like his most impactful or most lyrical. And it's definitely not that. But it's definitely one of his best songs, like, to listen to. And then the only problem I have with it is that the other songs do kind of get outshined. Like songs like Ignorance is Bliss, Alien Girl, Opposites Attract, uh, Cut You Off, She Needs Me, HOC. Like those are all really good songs. The entire project is good. But they get outshined by songs like PMP 1.5 with Absol, Michael Jordan with School by Q, Average Joe, Barbed Wire. Like, there's just a lot of good songs that most of them get outshined. And that's the only problem I have with it. So, I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10 just for that one reason. It would be a 10 out of 10 if each song actually had its purpose for being there. And it didn't just get outshined by one or two other songs. So, next up we have To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. This is definitely the album I wanted to listen to the most because... At least for like two, three years now, I've heard only good things about it. I've heard All Right and King Kunta, but I never took the time to actually listen to the full album. And this released back in 2015, so it's been almost 10 years now since it released. We're on year 9. And I thought, it's finally time. I'm making this video, I might as well just get it over with. The album was about an hour and 20 minutes, and it was phenomenal. It really touches upon world topics like I, it's hard to explain at least for me because like I've never been good at explaining things but you really need to have an open and conscious mind going into this album and if you don't have that if you don't have that open conscious mind then it may seem lame to you it may seem boring obviously there's some really good songs and they're like all right, and King Kunta, like I said, those are probably the songs you can vibe to the most without caring for the rest of the album or the theme of the album. But you really want to like, you really want to listen to this, and a lot of it is explained in Mortal Man, the outro track. The song itself is about four minutes, four and a half minutes, with the rest of it being uh, an interview, like a fictional interview, I believe that's right, or like just like a made-up interview between Tupac and Kendrick if they had done this interview and he reads off a couple poems and it explains the whole album in detail through one of the poems and it uses the metaphor of a caterpillar which I find fascinating so overall this album was great I have no critiques except for maybe like obviously because it, it's a special album so he tailored this, like, this specifically, but other than that, I just didn't like how there's so much talking, but that's what makes this, that's what makes this album to Pimple Butterfly, that's what makes it good. It's a mix of both singing, rapping, it's a mix of that, and you add in the talking and interviews and whatnot, that's what makes it perfect. It's a 10 out of 10 album, definitely. One of the greatest I've ever heard. And our next album is Mad Villainy. So this is a pretty old one. This is 2004. It is from the collective duo of Madlib and MF Doom. And I really enjoyed this album. 
there were times where like I felt Doom was offbeat, but it's kind of like G Herbo in a way. Like it's supposed to sound like that, and for that reason, like I can't do you can't use that reason to mark it down because it's a part of the song. But other than that, I really liked the songs. They sounded like kind of boom bap ish. Not as like not as much as Illmatic or other albums, but it did have that boom bap element to it. There were twenty two songs, and each one was pretty short, except for a few like Rhinestone Cowboy, uh, America's Most Blunted, and it was like those those longer songs weren't really appealing except for Rhinestone Cowboy, because it just had like a lot of extra stuff in it. Like, you had a lot more, like, I guess, skits or, like, funny moments. I don't know if you can call it that. But, like, you just had some random talking and stuff in, like, um, in America's Most Blended, for example. And, but other than that, I really liked this album. Each song had a solid verse from MF Doom. Mad Lib went crazy on the production. The features really did their thing, too, especially Stacey Epps. I really liked I. And then, you know, yeah, Raid... Like, my, my favorite songs were probably Money Folder, uh, Figaro, and Great Day. Those are probably my top three. And, yeah, let's move on. But, uh, yeah, I'll actually give this, like, an 8, probably 9 out of 10. Not exactly 10 out of 10 because there are some, like, there's a lot of, like, just extra stuff in there. But other than that, it's really good. So, 9 out of 10. And following Mad Villainy, we have Mmm Food by MF Doom as well. So this one is in, doesn't have that like Mad Lib production. It might have like a couple songs, but it's not like a collaborative effort. Um, it was a really good album. I actually liked it more than Mad Villainy. And both of these albums came out in the same year, 2014. And I feel like Mmm Food just has like, I'm just going to refer to it as food. But food has like, I, I don't know what it is, but it's just like really good. But it's far better than Mad Villainy. I know I'm going. I might get flamed for that. It's a hot take, but whatever. Um, there were some uh, interesting song choices like Ho Cakes, Poo Put Flop, Poo Put Platter, and Vomit Spit. But <laughs> ignoring the song names, they're really good. Like my favorite song, my top three, I'd say were Cookies. Uh, Guinnesses, not Guinnesses, Cookies, uh, One Beer, and I'd say Potholders. Like, those are my top three. The only thing I didn't really like were how, like, just in the middle of the album, there's just, like, four interlude skits that just, like, are there. You got Poo Putt Platter, Phileo Rapper, Gumbo, and Fig Leaf by Carbonate. Like, if the album was a little longer, that'd be fine, and because like they could just MF Doom could spread it out. But having like it was still an interesting thing. Like I really, I still liked it, but it just kind of got in the way. And then like, cause it's like a solid five, six, seven minutes between Deep Fried Friends and Con Carne. So like that's at least six, seven minutes of no rapping. And the only album I can think of that can do that is to Pimp a Butterfly. Because it's Kendrick. Like, it's supposed to be like that. But Food is still a really good album. And Ho Cakes, for being, what, the third most popular on the album, I wouldn't say it's the third best. Just because it's the third most popular doesn't mean it's the third best. But, yeah, it is a very solid album. I like the verses. They were, in my opinion, they went harder than on Mad Villainy. So for this album, I'm going to have to give it 10 out of 10. This was probably the best album I've heard in a while besides Pimp a Butterfly. And yeah, let's move on to the next album. And here we have The College Dropout. So this is Kanye West's first album in 2004. And it was a pretty solid album, in my opinion. It's much better than like his recent albums like Donda and Vultures 1. Uh, it's better than Kids See Ghosts, in my opinion, and really, that's all the Kanye albums I've listened to in full, but, yeah, so, this was about, tw there's 21 songs, there were a lot of skits, which do add, like, character to the album, but I'm not a fan of them, there's just too many, let's see here, there's at least one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'd say like seven and a half. If you include like the end of last call when Kanye's talking about how he started. So you erase all that, let's say you keep last call. That's already fourteen songs out of the twenty one. So a good third of this album is skits and I just I'm not a fan of it. Now there were I did I didn't really like the first half of the album. I was like songs like Jesus Walks, All Falls Down and Spaceship those were some really good songs I liked, Never Let Me Down. But my favorites were the obvious slow jams, uh, Two Words with Most Def, Freeway, and The Boys Choir of Harlem, and then Through the Wire. Those were my top three. Um, Most Def definitely did his thing. Kanye did his thing too. Two Words is probably my favorite of the three. And then Slow Jams and Through the Wire. So overall, this was a really good album. It's just... I didn't, I wasn't really a big fan of the first half. Like, they, they're good songs, don't get me wrong. It's just, they're, they're not something I would listen to. Like, I just wasn't feeling the vibe. But All Falls Down was still good, don't get me wrong. That was probably the best song in the first half. Same with the Spaceship. But overall, I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. I was going to rate it a 6. But I feel like it's, it's better than a 6. But it's not like, in my opinion, it's not deserving of like an 8. Now... Obviously, I don't want to get flamed for this because obviously, people. Some people may think this is his best work. Some people think it's graduation, the life of Pablo, whatever. This is not my favorite. I just want to make that clear. So if it's your guys' favorite, good for you, honestly. But it's not my favorite, so I'm not gonna say, "Hey, it's a ten out of ten album," and but I'm not gonna listen to it again. Like, I'm not gonna say that. So it's just my opinion. You guys are entitled to your own. And on to the final, yeah, the final album of this video. And finally, we have Cheat Codes by Danger Mouse and Black Thought. This is a duo that I didn't, I've never heard before. I haven't heard any Danger Mouse or Black Thought songs before, except for, I forgot one, it was like 10 missed calls or something. I believe Black Thought was on it or he made it or something, but I don't remember much of that. So, this is really my first experience with both of them, and it was amazing. Earlier in the video, I reviewed Mad Villainy, which was MF Doom and Madlib, and that was an insane duo, producer-rapper duo, that you just don't get that experience anymore. Not even with, like, people with Future and Metro Boomin. This was a phenomenal experience, and Danger Mouse and Black Dot rivals that producer-rapper duo. Uh, my favorite songs were the darkest part with Raekwon and Kid Sister because with Joey Russ and Dylan Cartilage Belize with MF Doom Strangers with ASAP Rocky and Run the Jewels Close to Famous and Saltwater with Kanye the Machine basically half the album it was really good I was I especially liked the features honestly I'm not even gonna lie but Black Dot went off and I'm I'm not lying there either Black Dot's verses were lyrically and were lyrically great and they were hype it's something again you need like a conscious mind to be able to understand what most of these albums in this video are and i was trying to keep it that way so that's mostly conscious albums and this was just amazing why while, while while i wasn't paying too much attention to black dot i did pay enough i did pay a significant amount of attention to his verses and they were just really good i, I can't describe it but it was just amazing. And then obviously you got ASAP Rocky, Conway the Machine, Run the Jewels, Joey, Russ, Raekwon. All of them carried their weight. Honestly, Russ surprised me. But people like still talk down on Russ because like, he's not your typical rapper. Obviously he's white so people are going to be a little biased since people claim, oh, rap is a black genre. Anyone can rap. You got Eminem, you got Jack Harlow, even though some people don't like him. Same with Joyner Lucas. You got Russ, and Russ is just one of those people who you just either you like him or you don't. You, I don't believe he makes bad music. From what I've heard of him, I haven't heard much. But it just might take some time to get into him. And he really carried his weight with Joey, Black Thought, and uh, yeah, it was just them three. 
But yeah, I really like the album. And I would give it a 10 out of 10. All these albums in this video were great. But this is one of the best. It's up there with uh, Food and The Pimple Butterfly. Definitely. Hey y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if I didn't review an album that you wanted me to, then drop a comment and I'll check it out. If I've listened to it already, I'll let you know. But yeah, that's the end. And if you guys disagree with some of the opinions or uh, ratings I gave the albums in this video, also let me know in the comments and I'll try to reconcile with you. But yeah, again, this is just my opinion on these albums. They're not like, I'm not saying these albums are the best. I'm not saying they're garbage. But, you know, it's just, it's just my opinion at the end of the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.